Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, yeah, I'm just gonna do a care video on the Warrior Beetle. Yeah, so, hold on, give me a second. This thing doesn't want to shut up. Just make it stop. Sorry, I had to release the air out of that because it didn't make noise. Okay, anyways, back to what I was talking about. We're gonna do a care video on the Warrior Beetle. So yeah, first let's just start off by just taking a look at them and the enclosure I have them in. We'll even talk a little bit about breeding. So first of all, this is my normal um, enclosure I have them in. So this is just what's it called. Um, these are like old decayed pieces of wood. They break apart very easily in your hand. As you can see, I can just easily snap it in half. So, um, I have four in here, so here they are, uh, as you can see they have pretty large pinches. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay, it's not going to focus, but as you can see they have large pinches. So you can't keep too many together because they will fight and, like, damage each other pretty bad. So in here, this is just the pencil shaving. This is just, a uh, blue sand. That's what they're normally in. Sand. <laughs> And pieces of old wood. So this, are like, this mimics their natural habitat. So blue sand. Whatever color sand it is. Just use the sand. And if you really wanted to. You can mix in some black soil with it. Or just soil in general. And it will give it a better texture. And it will keep in moisture. So it will promote egg laying. So you also want to have some kind of shelter. You don't want an above ground shelter. Since they like to dig. You keep just a flat piece of wood and they will make their own burrow under it which is ideal because you don't have to actually buy a hut you can just use a piece of wood and throw it in there so these guys i don't um i don't know how to tell the sex i don't know if it's a male or a female but ouch but they do have different body sizes some of them bigger And so, yeah, and now it's, they're going on to their diet. Every, let's say, every three or four days, I'll throw in one cricket for each beetle. And the beetles will chase down the crickets and rip them apart. Um, it'll usually take longer if you leave the crickets back legs on because they can jump and get away pretty easily. So I take away the back legs so they can only run. You don't have to do that, though, if you don't like to do that, but I do. So it'll make it faster for them to catch it. So I'll let them do that. And then watering. You don't really have to water them that much because they are a desert species. I give them a light mist every week or so. Just a real light mist because they don't like water that much. Most of their water comes from their prey, which would be the cricket. So you don't have to worry about that. And now let's go on to breeding. So this is not the breeding container. I don't. I wouldn't breed them in this. I have them in a nicer aquarium. If you watched my previous video, I talked about putting them in here. So there's there was six in there, but I moved a male and a female in here because I caught the mating real real quick. I had to be really quick, and I caught both of them and just threw them in here. So for this part, um, this is normal colored sand from this one, the one with darkling beetles in it. I put it in some of it in here and. I mixed it up with black, black regular soil, and put some pieces of leaves and twigs and stuff in there. And I still need to get a piece of wood to put in here, so they can hide under that. There's only two in here, and that napkin in the back. They will actually lay eggs in or on that napkin. Keep that napkin moist though. It needs to stay uh, not soggy but moist, damp. So yeah, they're pretty cool. Um. And then the larva, I don't have any larva currently, because these are just like a fresh batch I caught. Um, the larva are usually, they go through three instars. Uh, L1, L2, and L3. The first instar is going to be the smallest one, and it looks like a little black worm. Like a, a wire worm, kind of. But they have very vicious teeth. But you need to keep the adults and the worms apart from each other. The adults will eat the worms. The worms can feed on crickets, 
pieces of dog food, other small worms and larvae. They're pretty versatile when it comes to feeding them. So, yeah, and then after a while, they'll calm down in a small corner once they've reached the stage of L3, pupate, and turn into a ground beetle again, which the process takes about nine months. But if the beetle, lived two, if the beetle lives two years, it's not that bad. Because most of mine that I've had live about two years, and they pass on. But two years is a pretty long time for a little bug like that, so I find it pretty beneficial. So yeah, just wanted to show y'all that and how they work. So peace out, like and subscribe.